Okay, I'm a physician uh, to start with. I went to medical school, and then after medical school, I, I got interested in public health. And epidemiologists are the, uh, it comes from the Greek word epidemic or Latin word. And initially, they studied communicable diseases. They figured out the contagion and how diseases spread in populations. And I do chronic disease epidemiology. I'm not interested in the communicable diseases, except in passing. I'm interested in what's responsible for our modern plagues. And I'm convinced that the same techniques that we used to solve the communicable diseases could be used to, to study uh, what's killing us now. My little book, it's called Dirty Electricity. And if anybody told me then I'd, I'd written a book about it, I'd, I would say you're out of your mind. But over the last 10 or 15 years, I've been so frustrated with my Ill Ill inability to get the word out about how dangerous uh, this dirty electricity is. Uh, we get into what it is later. That I wrote a book about it. I also got a website. And uh, what's important about the website, it, it's got links to the papers that the book is based on. You've got PDF files, so you don't have to go to the library. They're right there. You can push a button. You can read about Lou Gehrig's disease, which I think I understand now. And, and you can read the historical paper, which is basically the guts of the book. So it's all there for, for, for your, your use. And basically, what, what the... What the book is about is, I came to the startling conclusion, I mean, this is just mind-boggling when you think about it, that almost all the diseases of the 20th century that we consider the so-called diseases of civilization, all the cancers, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, suicide, they're all called by, by electromagnetic field exposure. Suicide? All, suicide, too. Yeah, well, suicide's got a long connection with EMF. Their study's 25 years old, Sean. People live near power lines or people live in residences that have high magnetic fields have higher suicide rates. And uh, I think I can explain suicide in Gulf War veterans too. I think it's another EMF disease. <clears throat> but the other reason for writing a book is uh, I think the, the cancer causing qualities and, and the other th stuff I, I stumbled on were we'll go back to Edison, but in the last 30 years, we've had this explosion of new technologies for communication and you know, radio frequency radiation from cell phones and cell towers, terrestrial antennas, Wi-Fi in schools, and on, on airplanes. Can you, of all places to have Wi-Fi, they beam it up from the ground, they pick it up, amplify it, and send it through the, the plane, this metal cylinder where you're going to get reflections and hot spots. I mean, uh, I won't fly one of those anymore. I may never fly. And uh, there's some other cockamamie schemes, internet over power lines, broadband internet, so you can plug your computer into any outlet. That would guarantee your house is hot as a pistol all the time. And then the personal electronic equipment like my hot little computer here. Okay, now I guess let's measure, talk about what dirty electricity is. On, on this graph here, uh, the, the wavy red line is a 60 cycle oscilloscope tracing on, on a Fluke, Fluke uh, 199B. And you can't see it with this magnification, but if you look carefully at it, you get these little tiny bumps in it. That should be perfectly smooth. And if you if you put put that, that current through a, a high-pass filter and just and eliminate the 60-cycle stuff and magnify it, you get this the blue jiggly bumpy stuff is High frequency transients and uh, called dirty electricity and, and, and harmonics. And what's causing it in this situation, this bike shop was over 20,000 units on the modified meter. It was about 20 feet from the base of a, another cell tower in a strip mall over here in, in, uh, in Indio. I shop in a Mexican bakery there, and the bike shop has moved, thank God. Uh, so I went in and asked the guy if I could measure what was in his, his shop, and he let me do it. And I got over 20,000 units, and I measured four or five other uh, shops in the mall, and they're all high. Oh, you see, cell, cell towers, 
they put out the, they, they, they're plugged into the, the, uh, the grid, so they're operated on direct current. They operate on alternating current, but their guts run on ele the electronics of all transmitters, cell towers, FM, AM, your computer, everything runs on direct current. So they, the devices that change the alternating to direct are called switching power supplies or switch mode power supplies or, or inverters. Same problem with solar and with wind. They don't generate a good frequency, so they have to change it to match. But this, these cell towers, they interrupt the current flow and inject this dirty electricity back into the grid. So, so the, the, the strip mall was right near the cell tower, and you were suffering. Just not only the radio frequency coming off the top that makes your cell phone work, but this dirty electricity that's uh, that was pumped back into the grid that was contaminating the whole area and the ground too, because I'm sure these things are grounded. So, so the ways you make dirty electricity are arcing, like Edison's original generators, arcing and sparking. Uh, anytime you see pa power line, you know, like a electric arcing, they're making dirty electricity, and and these switching power supplies, anything that interrupts current flow, and every modern, all these little wall warts that use the, your cell phone charger does that. Uh, every computer in the world's got got. Uh, switching power supply in it because that stuff runs on direct current. The, the childhood leukemia thing just puzzled the hell out of me. And uh, one, one night in 1990, I saw this graph, and basically it's a time trend of residential electrification in the U.S. I was so dumb, I had no idea where where this came from. So uh, I wrote the, the guy published the graph, and uh, I got an immediate response saying well, he didn't say dummy, but <laughs> He said, well, hell, it's in Census Bureau data. I didn't know that. So I charged down to the State Library and dug out the census data. And sure enough, what you have is, is this uh, remarkable uh, divergence. The rural people in this country didn't get electricity. The final farms didn't catch up to the urban areas until mid-50s. We see, I had 50 years where you had two populations in this country, one which had ready kilowatt in the house and one who didn't. So I said, hey, let's let's look at the how the, the childhood leukemia plays out vis-a-vis -vis electrification, because now I knew uh, what to look for. So Eric Osiander, who we are still, we still working at the health department, he was a smart statistician epidemiologist, really smart, computer savvy like you couldn't believe. So we uh, basically uh, we dug out from the vital registration system uh, deaths by single year of age due to childhood leukemia, and then we, we got the the populations of births for those years, so we could calculate incidence, which is the number of new cases per year, new deaths per year, mortality is what we looked at, and then we used the census data by state to because they had published whether the, our residence was hooked up. So we analyzed the association between the percent of homes served by electricity in each state and the childhood leukemia mortality rate. We, we did it around in the period 28 through 32 to, to, to bracket the 1930 census and 49 to 50 to bracket the, uh, the, the 50 census. We had leukemia mortality data for each state for 28 through 32 and 49 through 51. There were some gaps in it, so we just had to use what was there. And so you, and what we saw was just this, this remarkable pattern if, as percent of residences which were electrified go up, the death rate per, per 100,000 goes up too. And there's the peak emerging. 1920, you don't see it. 1930 is pretty flat, it's starting to emerge in 40. And 50 and 60, plain as day. And this is to try to put, put a quantification on it. For a, a 10 percent increase in residential electrification in the critical age class, age two through four, uh, you got a 24 percent increase in leukemia mortality. And that's, 
that that's remarkable. I mean, and you don't see it at all in the kids who died out of the age peak at age zero to one. Their odds ratio was right on one. We wouldn't expect it. Here's mo fairly modern data, 73 through 95. You see the, the peak is, is there in spades for ALL. It's not there for non-ALL. Remarkably, it's not there. I don't have the graph, but it's, you don't see it in Sub-Saharan Africa. What's ALL again? Acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And this, the curve, the peak is made up of common acute lymphoblastic leukemia, one, one type. So when I was doing that, Doing those studies, you know, just sweating over books with a magnifying glass or, or downloading uh, 1,053 pages online. I used a lot of paper and did this all out of pocket after I was retired, basically. I, I noticed, I uh, couldn't help but look at some of the adult cancers. Here we had childhood leukemia associated with residential electrification and, and the I just picked female breast cancer as a common cancer. It kills a lot of women. And they had a 79.9 had a or 80% association, just like childhood leukemia. I couldn't believe it. I said, it's, I, yeah, I wrote, when I did that in 2000, I just couldn't believe that power frequency magnetic fields, the 60 cycle stuff, could be this carcinogenic. And uh, so I just got sack. I knew it was, I looked at all the other cancers. And I was astonished that all other causes of disease, like suicide, diabetes, were strongly related. Epson started New York City electrification in 1882. By 1900, cities, most of the cities had electricity by 1900. The average life expectancy in the cities was eight years less than out in the country. That's all causes. Average life expectancy. So here's the paper I, I wrote about that. That's on my website, and you can read it. And basically, it's, you know, the big surprise for me was that it wasn't just the cancers. I expected them, because I looked at childhood leukemia, breast, and the other things, but cardiovascular disease, diabetes, amazingly. This is kind of a tedious study, but this shows each state and uh, percent of residences with electric, electricity, electric lighting for 1930 and 1940. So we had a lot of states. We got a lot of data points, which is kind of nice. Here's some of the graphs that, that were skipped in my Commonwealth presentation. Here's the death rate, 1900 to 1960. This was in it. The spike in 1918 is the influenza pandemic. But look, all causes are going down. And that's, that's really the triumph of public health. We started smallpox vaccination. And they learned how to, they learned about enteric disease. You know, in the old days before pipes and water cl cleaning up, they, uh, every spring there were massive epidemics in the North Country of uh, enteric disease. Fatal, typhoid, cholera, because the, when the ice thawed, all the feces that was in the ground got into people's water. So this basically is uh, due to infectious disease rates dropping. Uh, but it's not good news if you look at cancers. Here's total cancers, 1900. If that isn't going up, nothing's going up. Public Health Service and National Cancer Institute don't want you to know this. They talk about the war on cancer, which is an abysmal failure because they haven't looked at the right things. Here's cardiovascular renal disease. That's not going down, that's going up. Diabetes, the, the break up here is due to code change. That's the remarkable increase. And this, this slide is hard to see, but it's showing you the urban excess of uh, by cause of death, comparing the urban rate and the rural rate. What's remarkable is the urban rate of diabetes is 66% higher than the rural rate. Electrical, electrified versus non electrified. And the others are around 50%. All cancers, 49.2%. Heart disease, 33%. Other diseases of the heart, 33% higher in urban than rural areas. Suicide, 30% higher. 
it's just correlations, and they're all high. It's, I don't want to get mathematically comp complicated, but there's the significantly high correlations between the percent of st uh, the electrification rates of the state and uh, the mortality from all these causes, except accidents. There's no automobile accidents. There's no correlations. So you got a nice built-in control. Uh, to look at this visually, if you look at total death rates, urban, rural, the uh, urban is black, the rural is green. The states on the right side are Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama, Arkansas, Mississippi, states that had really low rates of electrification in 19, 1940. These are northern states in California, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York. See, in every case, the urban rate is higher than the rural rate. And if you look at the northern states, they're all higher. Everything's higher than the rural, rural rates. And that's all causes. Look at cancers. Like, there's enormous differences in, between urban Georgia and, and Rhode Island. It's three times higher. And you get this urban rural difference. Uh, see, in the, in the northern states, there wasn't that much difference between urban and rural because they electrified the farms fairly early. In the southern states, the, the thing to save the people uh, in the rural areas was that they were, weren't ele as electrified as they were up north. So you see the differences. This is heart disease. Look at the huge differences there. Urban, rural, southern states, northern states. Look at the difference between Massachusetts, rural, rural Massachusetts, and uh, say rural, rural Alabama. It looks like it's five times higher. Here's diabetes. Just enormous differences again. Urban rural differences, electrified versus non electrified. If you spend some time with these papers, they're, they're really interesting. I wrote them so anybody can understand them. Here's suicide. This paper's going back 20 years showing electrification and suicide uh, are associated. And here we have a, the same pattern urban rural suicide. And I love this graph because this, this is a spot graph, each spot is a state. Here's rural suicide rates. You see a, a nice upward uh, trend with electrification. You don't see that in the, the urban areas because they're pretty much all the same in terms of their electricity. Here's here's uh, my poster ch children for what what we could could have uh, if we didn't have elect electrification or if we got smart about it. The old order Amish came over in the 1700s to escape persecution in Europe. And uh, they shun electricity. They figured it's some sort of evil created by the devil or whatever else. If you compare, if you compare the Amish to non-Amish, uh, they've got very, very low prevalence of cancer, diabetes, type two diabetes. They get the same body mass index. They weigh just as much as we do. They eat a lot of nice, greasy, fat, high, high caloric stuff. I actually talked to the group at the University of Maryland that study these people and they just scratched their heads and said, God, their diabetes rates are just terribly low. And so I, I told them it's due to electricity, they just laughed at me. <laughs> Alzheimer's is low, so is suicide, cardiovascular disease is low. I don't know if I have a slide for it, but I found a pediatric practice which I wrote up in the book that took, took care of about 800 to 1,000 Amish families someplace in Indiana, in the Midwest. This, this pediatric pediatricians, they've never seen a case of ADHD, never seen a case of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or childhood obesity in any of the, the Amish kids they, in their practice. So my hypothesis is that the epidemic of the so-called diseases of civilization aren't caused by lifestyle but by, by electricity and I think the active agent is dirty electricity. Basically, half the deaths from all causes in this country are probably due to electricity. Not probably, are due to it. I, mean, I don't want to mince words. The statistics are clean. So the good news is a large, large proportion of what we call diseases of civilization are preventable. And 
and I'm really worried that another epidemic of of diseases is underway caused by modern radio frequency. Well, you know, until uh, until we got into the computer era, basically most of oh well since the beginning, most electricity generated is used to turn motors, the wheels of progress, uh, and, and industry. But now that and most of the loads were linear. In other words, they they didn't spit anything back into the grid. But now, with the computers and Wi-Fi and and cell towers uh, and smart meters and it's, it's, a, it's a new ball game. We, the, if you look at urban RF levels, they've gone up exponentially. You know, I mean, we're not talking doubling. We're talking going up by a power factor. It's radio frequency levels. I mean that that's urban RF is uh, is an anathema now, I mean, because it had it started back with the television transmitters and uh, air, air, transmitters in air, but but the the thing about the sturdy electricity that's so sinister, it it's in every wire in every every house in every office. Twenty five years ago, with the when people started plugging in all these uh, these these electronic devices. Before that, like an incandescent bulb uses, it's a linear load. The current comes in, it does what it's supposed to do, it goes back to the substation on a neutral wire on the poles. But with this new, new stuff, it's injecting all this dirt into the grid and into the ground. And, and the reason it's going into the ground is, uh, what happened is they started getting fires in the, the, in the, the neutrals in, in houses and buildings. So code change to make them beef up the, the in-building wires, but they didn't, didn't force the utilities to beef up their return system. So what they allowed them to do is every other telephone pole, they have a, a, down, a down wire from the neutral to the ground, so they're letting the earth return the current, and it will it'll go back to the substation. Every electron that comes out has to go back. That's what makes an electric circuit, but they uh, the, the last I heard is the seventy percent of the electricity that's delivered by the utility from the substation returns to the substation via the earth. The evil of that is it makes cows sick, animals that are on the ground, and and that's actually how how this whole field got got started. Uh, Marty Graham, uh, you know, testified for for dairy farmers because the cows stopped giving milk and they tracked it to the this stuff coming in, going up the hooves and generate currents in, in the cows and, uh, and but it gets in your house through the water pipes through the sewer pipes through ground rods and there's well, there's a book out fairly recently uh, called earthing and they, they pedal devices which you're supposed to lay on a bed and discharges your body currents to the earth unfortunately that's great if you live in a place where those the ground currents are okay but you ought to see the stuff that's in the ground around here I wouldn't want that coming back into my body through a ground wire, because current runs both ways on a wire. Okay, so the, yeah. prob the problem with these uh, so-called green energies is they're not green. They make dirty electricity. I mean, like, I went to buy a bulb this morning because we were out of incandescent bulbs. I, I had to struggle to find a non-compact fluorescent bulb. Those things interrupt the current flow 30 times a second, and they put tons of dirty electricity into, into the grid. Okay, now we talk about green energy. There's a, and I, I'm all for uh, alternate, you know, non-polluting forms. But unfortunately, solar and wind both generate DC or AC at the wrong frequencies. They uh, they use inverters to convert from one to the other. But the uh, the equipment that makes conversion inf injects high frequency transients into the grid. If you had time, I could show you a. Uh, a couple waveforms of from the, the wind farm down here at I-10. There's about a thousand windmills there. You can't believe the garbage in the air and in the ground, and and a lot of the new junk that's being manufactured, like like motors. The old motors had switches uh, to control how how they their speeds. Now they got these variable speed motors that have switching power supplies. They got them on furnace fans and on other appliances. Those things generate 
massive amounts of dirt electricity. So, so do uh, dimmer switches. That's one of the first devices that, that, that do this. Compact fluorescent bulbs, halogen light bulbs. And the, some of the smart meters are really nasty in that they, they're broadcasting 24-7. Not only are they putting RF into the air, but I'm sure that, that uh, since their guts are operate on direct current, they must have switching power supplies in them too. I'd love to get one. I guess you can't buy them. You can't go get them. If somebody's got one, I'll come and measure this silly thing. And I've got all the tools to do it. I know about the RF. I, I know there's different types. Some talk to each other going down the block and others, uh, you know, broadcast. But uh, the other thing about them that's nasty is it gives the utilities a way to basically spy on you and to control what's happening at your house. I don't want anybody being able to shut off my electricity without me shutting it off. I think that sucks. And, and what Big Brother's getting us. And the, the whole thing was supposed to tie to, to talk to appliances in your house. More RF, who needs more RF? It's everywhere. It's killing us. It's making people sick. You know, I'm, I'm really offended by it. some of the new homes are being built now without telephone wiring. They're almost forcing you to use wireless uh, in your homes. And, and, and schools are just filthy with, with Wi-Fi's and, and kids using laptops. And it's just, a, I mean, that's why kids are taking Ritalin. Stetzer fixed the school up in, uh, up, up in Wisconsin and the kids threw their pills away. Another disease that's almost certainly related to this is childhood asthma. They, they had 37 kids in that school to inhalers, used inhalers for their asthma, and once it was cleaned up, only three of them still needed it. So, and it, there's just, we could have a healthier, happier, longer lived world, and we'd have to take as many pills <laughs> and, and see the shrink. Uh, and I really feel bad for the electrosensitive people because. You know, it's it's a real thing. I mean, I, I get calls every day from them, and, and and their doctors and the medical profession think they're wacko, and they're not. It's real. Stetch is electrosensitive. We we when we visited a hospital. It was we measured it for about a half hour, and it was over twenty thousand dirty electricity units. And got out to the car, and he opened his shirt, and his chest looked like like a meat pie. It was oozy, inflamed. I said, my God, how long have you had that? He said, oh, about five minutes. <laughs> no way. We, by the time we got home, you know, drove out here, it was gone. So he, he just breaks out like mad when he gets in strong fields. And he gets violently ill, too, uh, if, if he stays there. And I said, it's real. <clears throat> like, I bought a tel telephone for an uh, interview the other night because the other one didn't have good fatality. I went to, uh, uh, I went to Home Depot went to another big box store. There wasn't a single landline phone available for sale. It was all these decked phones and digital enhanced communication technology. Those things are horrible. 24-7 are putting bad stuff into your house. Now, now Siemens is making a good one called EcoDeck. So if you're going to have to have a portable phone, buy one of those. It's only, only radiates you when the phone's on. The other ones are on 24-7. Magda Havis has recently showed that in a subsample of people I looked at, about 10 to 15 percent of them have uh, cardiac irregularities when the phone's on, rate and rhythm changes, which is bad news. So uh, that's what's getting us. And, uh, the, the cure is to get back to linear loads, get rid of compact fluorescent bulbs, make sure that every device that's marketed is, is filtered properly, and, and and the utilities and uh, the people who make the stuff are going to kick and scream, and they've got lots of money and power, and uh, and they've, they've been able to, to keep this message quiet, but let's get it out there, get people aroused, and to try to do something about it. So, thanks a lot for your... <laughs> hey, but they have, yeah, buy the book. <laughs> I'll oh. wave it one more time. Oh, sure. It's one of the few books, it's easy to read, it's only 120 pages, it costs $10.36 at Amazon, and it's one of the few books you can read that could change your life for the better.